Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Happy Easter again. Amen. Uh, tunashukuru Bwana. We want to thank God for this opportunity to be here and to celebrate the risen Lord. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Bwana asifiwe. Let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you that, Lord, you have given us this time to come and worship you, to come and glorify your holy name, to come and say that, yes, you are risen. Father, we pray that you will, be, you, you will be with us even as we hear your word, because you have promised there is no word that will come out of your mouth that will go back in vain. Lord, we pray that you open our ears, our spiritual ears, and our physical ears. Open our hearts so that your word may come in and may be of help to our spiritual being. We thank you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be our acceptable to you, our rock and redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our message today is He is not here, He is risen. Bwana Sifiwe. Dare ha ha ne aliokete. Na nikuwa to inire rwebo Na niari okire Na kiuma berera yake Niari okire kiuma kwa goma Na reu ni ato ire kore ya igoro Ne jesu witu Ene mwadhani witu Hallelujah Matthew tells us about a story of some women that went to see where the Lord had been laid. These women on Friday, two days before, had been crying, had been in pain because they had seen how their Lord Jesus had suffered. They had seen and they had been part of the way of the cross. They had been part of the way that Jesus was, was, was taken to Pontius Pilate, that he was accused of being, uh, uh, calling himself the king of the Jews. There had been witnesses of the pain that he had to endure. There had been witnesses of the pain the mother and the brothers and the disciples had to endure. There had been witnesses of how the disciples got weak and started denying, denying the reason the, 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 their Lord. There had been witnesses of all the things that had gone around that week. There had been witnesses of the Passover. There had been witnesses of the Palm Sunday. There had been witnesses of when God, had Jesus, had risen uh, 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 the dead, had, had brought the dead to life. There had been witnesses when Jesus had brought back the lepers to walk. There had been witnesses of the blind seeing. There had been witnesses of the miracles of Jesus. Throughout the ministry of Jesus, these women had followed him. We remember one of the women that was mentioned was Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene has a, a big history in the Jews' history. She was one of the women that was supposed to have had seven demons on her. I don't know how seven demons look like on somebody. I have tried to think how that was. But we are told that Mary Magdalene had seven demons. Now this woman knew who Jesus was. Because if he had been able to heal her from seven demons, not one, not two, but seven demons, then she knew who this risen Lord was. She knew who Jesus was. She knew that Jesus was a healer. She knew that Jesus could do miracles. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And she comes and she watches her Savior, the person who had made her a person to be looked at people. Maybe she never looked, she was never looked at by people. Maybe she was never recognized by people when she had the seven demons. I am thinking about what we call mad men at home. So I can imagine Mary had these demons 
and whatever they were doing to her was not something good. It was not something to be reckoned with. It was not something that people were going to sit there and watch. Maybe even her family had denied her because she had the seven demons. And here comes a man who is able to rescue her, Buana Sifiwe. Her situation had been a hopeless situation before Jesus, before she met Jesus. Her situation was a hopeless situation. She had gone to the end of her rope. She had gone to the end and maybe she didn't know what else to do. Maybe she had gotten to a point of thinking, well, I might as well die because there is no hope in my life, Buana Sifiwe. But she meets the one, the one and only Jesus Christ, who heals her and tells her, daughter, you are loved just as you are. You are loved just as you are because I came so that you may have life and have it abundantly. And so after this healing, Mary Magdalene felt that it was in her heart to follow her savior to follow the Rabboni, to follow the teacher who had taught her that life was not to an end until Jesus says it comes to an end. She was able to follow this Jesus who was able to do miracles. She was able to follow this Jesus from day to day from, to learn from this savior. She was thirsting for the word of the Lord because she knew this word was the new word that had come into her and healed her life. Juana Sipiwe. Juana Sipiwe. It's Easter. Let us rejoice because he is risen. And so this, this lady goes on the way of the cross at a distance. She can see what this man is suffering, Jesus. But there was nothing much she could do. I can imagine that Mary was just praying for our Lord. She was just saying, oh my God, what can I do but pray, but follow and see what will happen. And she moves with the crowd. She moves with the disciples. She moves with all the people, with the people that went with Jesus. And she saw where they had laid the Lord. They went and removed him from the cross and put him in a tomb. They did not only put him in a tomb, the Bible tells us, but they also put a huge, huge stone on the tomb. Matia ima otoko muruta ma muruti ra make mora kakuma mote igoro maya kumwe keri ra de inewa bere ra na mage kera higa inene leta dia heli on modu mwe kaneri. They not only did that, but they also took soldiers and put them on guard so that nobody could come and touch this body that they had buried in the tomb. Because as far as they were concerned, this was the stone that nobody could remove. And so there was no way this guy who was calling himself the king of the Jews was going to come out even when he was dead. They thought they had done what they needed to do to keep our savior from coming back. Back to us but let me tell you a story Mary wakes up in the morning she wakes up because she is caring she cares about her Savior she wakes up because she knows there is something bigger than what the Jews knew there was something bigger than the San Henry's had done there was something coming that they didn't know what it was one as it they had something she knew there was something bigger, a higher power that was able to do exceedingly and abundantly much more than they could do. So she wakes up in the morning and she feels energetic. She takes up the oil to go and wash her savior. But she knew something was going to happen. How do you know that something is going to happen? Because when you have faith, you know something is going to happen. When you walk by faith, you know something good is going to happen. When you walk by faith, you know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. So she goes with her friend, another Mary. In fact, different Bibles tell us different things. In Mark 16, we are told that there, are, there was Mary and there was Salome. And then in Luke, we are told that there were some disciples that were following Mary. But we want to talk about Mary because she was the first one to go and see where the Lord had been laid. Let me tell you, 
she goes there to see what she can do. She goes there because she knew that she needed to do something. She needed to do something for this Christ that had done something for her. Something that was so precious in her life. She wanted also to do something for this Christ that had been so gracious to her. Niataka kweka kaodo, niyoto wa gayoyo, niyoto wa jeso yo wa mweke ili odo muna na muno. Ake murutoko bo ine wa goma. Thank you be to Jesus. And so she went. Early in the morning we are told. They went in the morning. Very early in the morning. What does that remind me of? When she woke up very early in the morning, it reminds me of commitment. When we are going to work and our shift starts at 6 o'clock, we normally wake up maybe 4, 4.30, depending on where you're going to work. You wake up early because you are committed to that job. You don't want to be late for that job. So Mary woke up early in the morning. I can imagine she woke up before the sun rose because she was committed to her Savior. How are we committed to our Savior? How much time do we spend with our Savior? How much time do we wake up in the morning, early in the morning, with our commitment to show that we love our Savior? Mary Magdalene woke up early in the morning because she was committed to this God that had done marvelous things in her life. How many things can you count today, like Mary Magdalene, that Jesus has done for you, and yet we forget to wake up in the morning to be committed to our prayer, to be committed to the word of God, to be committed to seek our Lord in the morning, in the night, in the noontime. How many times do we forget to seek our Lord? But Mary did not lose her commitment because she knew that his, this Jesus had something bigger than what she could have, have, have been able to do for herself. So she goes early in the morning and she finds that the rock, the stone had been removed. And on her way, if you read the book of Luke, it says, who is going to remove the stone for us? No, ogo tuwehereria ihiga. That is what the women were saying. Because they were women. And as far as they were concerned, they were not strong enough to move this stone. So they were concerned about who is going to move the stone for them. So they, go, they are going worrying because they were going to embalm the body and put new, new oil on it so that it doesn't rot very quickly. And they had all these beautiful, wonderful, expensive oils. They were wondering who is going to remove the stone for us. No, over to a heredity a higa. Nani mwe na idu neto kora go na mahiga. Nani mwe neto kwa we have stones and we have rocks that we do not know how to remove them. Bana sifiwe. But I want to promise you today, when you walk by faith, all the stones will be moved for you because Jesus is going to create a way for you because He's the way, He's the truth, and He's the life. Bana sifiwe. Amen. So they went, and as they were worried. First of all, the first thing they saw is that their worry, their first worry was gone. The stone had been removed. How wonderful it was for them. And of course, they were <laughs> surprised. They were surprised. Makimaka, wakashanga. What is going on here? We were expecting the stone. We were expecting the soldiers. And we were expecting not to be able to get in. Now the stone is, is, is being removed. That is the first thing they saw. And that tells me that something had happened. That Jesus was even if they didn't know he was alive, something had happened because the stone was not there anymore. Do you, do we get each other? Something had happened. 
whatever it was, something had happened and the stone had been moved. One and spirit. What a joy. Because their worry, their first worry had been had been removed for them. They now are better than where Hallelujah. Now they were just so we thought we can get out one kind. Until the way or that who go get see that you go with the other. Oh, that you are going to be better. Or you are going to do what I got. No, I had it. You know, are in my own. What did you do? He is risen. He is not here. When he is risen, he is risen indeed. Oh, I got a mouth of my who mother the care to. So he went. And he, they, they went and they saw that the stone had re, been removed. And then they go into the tomb and they find that Jesus is not there. The Bible tells us that Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, brought back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him they, that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, the guards were so afraid, and they shook, and they were like dead men. Because the power of Jesus Christ, Amen. The blood of Jesus is strong to make things happen for you and me. And it was like lightning. It was like an earthquake. It was not something that they expected. It was not something that they thought would happen. But you know, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes, when the power of Jesus comes into your life, people will think it's an earthquake. But it was not an earthquake, really. It was the stone that was being moved from the tomb so that we may know the power of the risen Lord, that anything can happen when Jesus appears. Nothing is impossible with whom we believe in. Amen. So the angel told them, do not be afraid, for I know what you are looking for. You know, I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. One of the few. Amen. The first thing is that they were committed. The next thing is that their stone had been moved away. Their first worry had been taken away from them. The third thing is that there was a testimony from an angel from above. They had a testimony. They had more glory than the risen Lord rising. Mm. What can you say, my evil tenor? They had a testimony. There was a testimony from the angel of the Lord who was there to testify that Jesus was risen. So it was not a story. It was not a fable. It was not a mucheneneko. It was a true thing. Buana sipiwe. That the angel of the Lord had a testimony. What testimony do you have today? If you were the angel, would you have the testimony that Jesus, come and see where he lay because he died for you and me. He died for my sins. Have you a testimony today to say that indeed he is risen? Do you have a testimony? Do I have a testimony that today I can say that he is risen? So Jesus is risen. And he's, he tell, the angel tells them, do not worry. Do not worry. Come and see where he was. And indeed they are told, don't even worry because go tell the others that he is risen, that he has gone ahead of you in Galilee, and there you are going to meet him. Is that Swahili salute? Ame watangulia. 
Jesus wa die bere akuma maodo madia gajwe when jesus goes beyond you be ahead of you he paves the way for you so that when you are going to galilee no stone will hit you nothing will be more important to you but to get to where your destination is when you allow the lord jesus to lead you makero go and tell the others that he has gone ahead of you and you're going to meet him in Galilee. Bana sifiwe. Amen. Mary. Mary was very happy because she, if you remember, was the one that Jesus had said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. So when she heard that Jesus was not there, she knew that what Jesus had always told her was the truth. One as if it. And if Jesus had not risen, even for us Christians today, our faith would be in vain. Tutti ge koro no ete kiosio, tutti ge celebrate Christmas, tutti ge celebrate Easter, because there would be nothing for us to believe in. Hallelujah. So Jesus came and died and rose on the third day so that he may be vindicated, so that he may be cleared. What he had said that the son of man is going to be beaten, he's going to die, and on the third day he's going to rise. This was coming true. And there are people to testify it. There are people to see it. There are people to identify him. There are people who are going to say, yes, this is the true God that we had seen before. This is the true God that had said that he was going to die and now he is alive. So my brother and my sister, they find out that Jesus is, away, is alive. And he even in some of the gospels, we are told that he spoke to them. They call, he called Mary and she looked on the other side and at first she did not recognize him. But then she saw him and she said, Rabboni, my teacher, my teacher. And then she went to touch him and he said, do not touch me because I have not finished my job. Do not touch me. But of course, she knew that her risen savior was there for her. And that is what for us today Easter means, that he is not here, he is risen. The resurrection changed everything. The resurrection changed everything because today we follow Jesus' teachings. Today we, 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 we follow Jesus' teaching so that we can be saved. But because he wants us to know him, he, we are able to be called sons and daughters of the mighty king. Because we are able to identify with him. Because we are able to say, yes, he is my savior. He is a personal savior. He is the one who has given me this what I have. He is the one who has removed me from the depths where I was, from the pits where I was. He is the one who has removed me from my, 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 my maybe addictions. He is the one who has brought me out of the places where I could not remove myself. If you read Psalm 42, David says that the Lord took him out of the pits. When you are able to know that this God can remove you, this Jesus can take you out from this pit, then you are able to declare him as your Lord and Savior. So the rock was not only removed, but the rock was also rolled away. Yes. yes, it was rolled away. Just from the entrance, it had been rolled away. What does that tell us? It tells us that the sting of death had been defeated. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our only way is to confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That after all that pain on Friday, after all that pain that Jesus went through, that on Sunday we can say he is risen. 
He is not here. He is risen indeed. And he rose so that the story that had been told by the prophets, the story that had been told by those before, the story that he himself had told his disciples about the son of man suffering and coming back to life will be fulfilled. Whatever had been said was fulfilled in this story. You know, as I said, these women were feeling hopeless and helpless because they didn't know who was going to remove the stone. But finding the stone removed, they feel uh, confident, they feel energized, they feel that there's something else that they need to look into because there is a hope. When the stone is removed from your life, there is always a hope. There is always a new beginning. There is always something new for you to look forward to. These women knew that if Jesus had been moved up, had, had, had come back to life as he had promised, that things were going to change. And in the next few weeks, we will see how things change, both for the disciples and those, those that are here, I, 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 I come after him. So on Friday, we were talking about Jesus was dead. But today, we are talking about the resurrection. We are talking that because we know that the sting of death has been removed. Jesus died so that we ourselves should never die. Yes, we are going to die physically, but those who trust in him, they are going to live forever. He came so that we may have life and have it abundantly. Amen. You know, that is why Paul says, as far as he was concerned, he wasn't afraid of dying. This body died. He was more afraid of the life after. And so he wanted to remain righteous and true to the word so that he can live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So as we celebrate Easter, my friends, let us pray to God to change the mood of hopelessness from the crucifixion on Friday to relief and joy on Sunday today, the Resurrection Sunday. You know, actually, Easter is the one that separates Christianity from all the other religions. It is the one that makes us believe in Jesus Christ, that he was, he, he, he was born and he died and he rose again. That is what separates us from all the other uh, uh, religions. So when we go to the tomb of Jesus Christ and we find there is no body because there is no death, because he is alive, he defeated death for your sake and my sake. He defeated death. He defeated death on the cross and he said, All is finished. Amen. Amen. So that's what he meant. That do not worry. Do not worry. In this world, you will have trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer, because I overcome, I overcame the world. Ate the no nego corona metadioko, nego corona madena, no we hege ken no, we he we he we he Hina niodo ne dera hota nire, ne bo hota nire. And because I have overcome, you as well are an overcome. And that is why Paul says in First Corinthians 15 and and 14 and 17 that if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. The resurrection validates or clears or authenticates the gospel of Jesus Christ. It, it tells us the truth about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lastly, the resurrection of Jesus tells us that all things are possible in the Lord. There is nothing that is impossible with the Lord. Because Jesus resurrected, 
And so it tells us that there is nothing that God cannot do for you and for me. He is telling us that his promises are always kept, even when we think they cannot be kept or will not be kept. So when he promises something, he delivers. Amen. When God promises you something, he delivers. Amen. When man promises you something, he might deliver or not deliver. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Human beings will promise us stuff. Sometimes they will deliver, sometimes they will not deliver. But when Jesus promises you something, he will always, 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 always deliver. The problem with us Christians, the problem with us people here is, is that we do not wait upon the Lord. We are hasty. When people promised you some money and you are really broke, you, people will call them uh, almost every minute. Money, no one need a kaja mukaria tora kire kani. Money, eh, the muhatere diya mo no money. You know, eh, then two minutes ago, eh, ne oti ne wokio na mo do ne orange te ne oko na ne geta. Woke kia, woke tuka. They are always calling. They are always calling. They are always calling. And sometimes it will go for months before you get it, or you will not even get it. Mani diradi yuko na kusema ni anamudu gwe na tuvesa tuwa kwa na hai eh 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 na hizo mochi kwa historia yao. But when our Jesus promises something, He will not tell you tomorrow He's going to meet someone, because He's the one who is going to meet you one on one, and He's going to deliver to you. Pigia Yesu makofi. So the Bible is telling us today that Christ's resurrection shows us that his promises are always kept, even when we think that they cannot be kept. An unknown author tells us about a list he made about God's promises. He says, we think it's impossible. God says, all things are possible. Luke 18, 27. We think, I am too tired. God says, I will give you rest, Matthew 11. We think nobody really loves me. God says, I love you, John 33. We think I cannot go on. God says, my grace is sufficient for you, 2 Corinthians 12. We think I can't figure things out. God says, I will direct your steps, Proverbs 3, 5. We think I can't do it. God says, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Philippians 4.13. We think I am not able. God says I am able. 2 Corinthians 9.13. 9, we think it's not worth it. God says it will be worth it. Romans 8. We think I cannot forgive myself. God says I forgive you. 1 John 1, 9. We think I cannot manage. God says I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. Amen. Amen. Philippians 4.19. We think, I am afraid. God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1. We think, I am always worried and frustrated. God says, cast all your cares unto me. 1 Peter 5.7. We think, I don't have enough faith. God says, I've given everyone a measure of faith. Romans 12, 3. We think I'm not smart enough. God says, I will give you wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1, 30. We think I feel alone. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. These are God's promises. And how do we keep these promises? We look and we see that the stone is rolled away. We see that Jesus is risen. And in fact, down there, sometimes, um, I mean, down uh, uh, verses 13, 14, the, 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 the soldiers ran to tell their bosses that something had happened, that they didn't know what had happened, 
but this Jesus was no longer in the tomb, and that the stone had been moved, and they are not the ones who moved it. Do you know what those bosses said? They gave them money, and they said, go and tell the people that the soldier, that, they are, they, that his disciples came in the night and stole the body away. You know what? When I was reading those verses, I remembered that that is how the devil uses his schemes to try and convince us about who Jesus is. He tries to convince you that it did not happen. He tries to convince you that it is not worth it. He tries to convince you and me that there is no such thing as the resurrection. But I have good news for us today that he is not here. He is risen and he has gone ahead of you. Why don't you follow him today to see Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you that you care. Lord, we thank you that you are risen and risen indeed. May you rise in our hearts. May you rise in our lives. May you rise in our spiritual walk. That when we walk, we walk with you. And we walk in your faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.